Kella. I'm going to be explaining how to create modules. I want you to hang in there as we are working on learning new things. Just like our students, sometimes it's hard. So I've created a demo course here because if you have not set up your Canvas class, this is what you see. Uh, I know my district has allowed some pulling in of other uh, content. Uh, but right now we're just going to go how to create a module. We're going to keep it simple. So first thing you're going to do is create a new module. Module name. Again, I like to set mine up weekly. So I'm going to do March 16th through the 20th, or we're going to go to the 23rd through the 27th. So let's say you teach math, you teach Eureka, or you teach English language arts or your social studies, whatever you're teaching, you could put your unit. So we're just going to do unit one, for example. Uh, I always like to include the date so they know where they need to work. So we've created our module. All right, right now, no one can see anything. You see this right here? No one can see anything. Also, my course is not published yet. So right now, students would see nothing. So I'm going to hit the plus sign. I'm going to add First thing is a discussion. I always like to start with a discussion. New topic. Uh, we're gonna do welcome to online learning. I always like to use this discussion as a way to greet students. So we have welcome to online learning. And then you're gonna click on the assignment. Again, nothing's live yet, but we need to edit. So Welcome. Then I like to have my to-do list of my assignments, which I don't haven't made any yet, but so I'd have assignment number one, which would be my direct instruction. And assignment number two would be the student's independent work. Three might be another direct instruction. Four I might have another assignment, and then I always like to include a quiz or assessment. This allows me throughout the week to know what's going on. Uh, the first thing they're going to do is this discussion. This is always going to be the first piece in the module. Um, I always like to try to include whether it's a fun bitmoji or something else that you know makes it more fun. You know your students, you know their humor. Um, try to incorporate that. So you have your discussion. Uh, I like to allow threaded replies because I want to keep track of who's replying to who. So it's something that I like to do. A lot of my discussions, except for this check-in, so if I have a discussion that's an assignment, I will select this where users have to post before they can see. This prevents students from copying each other's answers. Um, in this check-in, I'm not that worried about it. Here. Uh, I like to have them check in at least two or three times, two or three times during the week. So graded. So I always make my points. So I said uh, three. If I say three times, it's three points. So each reply that they have is a point towards their grade. Even if I'm not taking a grade and that's going in the grade book, I still like to grade their assignments. So it gives them that feedback and the chance to comment and discuss with what they're working on. Uh, assignment group um, is under assignments for now. So that's where this is going to appear, even though it's a discussion. You can set up your own assignment groups by going new group, and you can say discussions or check-ins. You're gonna add the group. You can also have one for quizzes. So these are our check-ins. Um, I like to make the due date, for instance, if we're talking about next week, the 23rd, the due date would be the 27th. So they need to have completed this by Friday the 27th. Uh, and I'm going to make it available or opening here on the 22nd, on the Sunday before it goes live. Uh, so that's kind of how I set it up. Then I hit save. Notice I don't hit save and publish because I'm not ready to publish this because I don't have my assignments. Then I'm going to come back here, home, and I have home set for 
for choosing home to be the course modules because I feel like that's the most direct way for students to see what they need to do. So we have our discussion. Now I'll have my assignments. I'll hit assignments. New assignment. Uh, I usually use Nearpod. The Nearpod one. Add that assignment. I'd go in and edit that the same. Go in, you hit edit. And I will usually embed the Nearpod. I'm not going to go into all that right now. This is an assignment group. Submission is online. I always either do text and file, typically. And then this, again, is due. If I want a student to complete this first, I'm going to make this due on Monday. Even if they do it late, I don't take points off for that week. But I put the due dates in order so that it shows up in order in their to-do list. So this is the first assignment I need them to do. It is due on Monday. Then I'm going to hit save. And same thing. I'd create a, a new assignment. I'd create my independent activity. And this would be due on Tuesday, for instance, because this is the second thing I want them to do. So, do Tuesday the 24th. And so, and then do the same thing for the quizzes. So, this is how you create modules and create activities. Um, to create a quiz, I'll show that in another video. I hope this helps explain how I've set up the modules and why. Um, and why it is in this order. When you're ready for the next week, you'll make a new module. And this will be uh, March 29th, April, I believe it's the 3rd. Then it add the module. And then again, go through the same thing. When I'm ready to publish, right here, turn it green. Everything turns green. Everything's published. Everything is ready. But they still can't see anything. If you look here on the right, if you see red, you're not published. Publish. Now my class is live. This class has no students in it, so nothing's going to actually show up for anyone. But I hope this helps. And I'll create some more videos.